Hello, this is Michael McCarthy. In this video, we're going to take a look at using Ornatrix and V-Ray to render out our character here, this fuzzy bear, with some photorealistic hair. To do that, we're going to have to focus on our lighting and our shading. In the previous tutorial, we looked at grooming this character using uh, Ornatrix's surface comb and some edit guides as well as strand curling and frizz and things of that nature. And now we're going to focus a little bit more on the lighting and rendering. Now if I do a quick render here, you'll see that as far as photorealistic rendering goes, we have a long way to go. We have some basic lights in here with uh, one shadow kind of going down on the bottom and we have pretty low sample rates uh, just to kind of keep those render previews pretty quick. We're also rendering at a pretty uh, small resolution. So let's go and take a look at our lights first. I'm just going to pop out into the top view here. Let's bring up our light lister. Here you can see that we have a few lights. Uh, the more important ones are going to be the uh, key left and key right light, as well as the uh, kind of top down light that we have here. Now, under our subdivs, we're using uh, some pretty low quantities here, which will up for the final render. And you can see that only one of them uh, has the shadow on. We'll turn shadows on for them as we need them. So I will turn on the uh, key right and the key top, and we'll just do another preview render. So you see, we'll start to get a little bit better shading, especially in here on the legs uh, as this goes through. But there's definitely one uh, component missing, and that's uh, any sort of really good hair shader. Um, so we're going to add that right now. Let's go into our material editor. And you can see that this just has a standard max material on it. We want to add a nice uh, V-Ray hair shader. So with a new material slot selected, we'll choose uh, V-Ray hair material. We'll apply it to our character, and we'll choose one of the presets. So I'm going to choose uh, White Shiny, so you can see that kind of comes up there, and we'll just do a quick render. Now it's certainly going to look a lot different. What we're looking for here is the uh, really nice hair highlights, which you can see the sheen kind of coming across here. And it certainly will be a lot darker in areas. Uh, one other thing that you know to note is that I'm using some really low anti-aliasing settings. I just have the fixed anti-aliasing down to one so that we can get a good preview of uh, the things like the highlights and the overall look of the fur, but not necessarily worry about that render time of the AA. Let's uh, bring a little bit of color into this. I'm going to go to the color of the body of the character and just copy that off. And then go back over into our hair material. And in the overall multiplier, I'm going to paste that in. So this will give us more of a uh, color. And we'll do another preview here. So you can see that color kind of coming in. We're getting rid of some of that gray. Now, one thing that's really uh, nice about the latest builds of V-Ray in the nightly builds, if you have access, and I'm sure in the soon-to-come future release, is the ability to render hair with V-Ray RT. So let me close this out and just kind of click on Render with V-Ray RT in the active shade. So now that the active shade is up, I'll uh, close this down for the moment. You can see that this will give us a real good ability to go in and start adjusting the colors. One other thing to do to kind of lighten this up is I'm going to copy this overall multiplier and I'm going to paste it into the diffuse. And you can see right away V-Ray RT gives us a nice feedback as to how that's going to change the color. And I can go in and do things like rotate the viewport. And you can see we get some nice fast updates as to how our character will look in different angles. The addition of using V-Ray RT with uh, Ornatrix is really great and hair in general in V-Ray. So this prevents me from having to you know shoot off another render after render when I'm just kind of tweaking some of these things. Now another thing that I want to do is enable my global illumination. So I'm going to go into the render setup. I'll go back to the production renderer. And although Global Illumination wasn't on, V-Ray RT always uses GI, so we'll start to get kind of a similar result. I'll go to Global Illumination. I'm going to go on Enable. And what you want to have is you want to start off with uh, Brute Force as your primary engine, and either Light Cache or Brute Force as your secondary engine. So you can see that kind of coming in there. I'm going to stop that for the moment and close it out. Now I'm using pretty low subdivisions for both brute force and light cache at the moment, but they should probably do for what we're looking at. Uh, let's just shoot off a quick render there. You can see that light cache building up. It's really making our hair much brighter overall. If I just zoom into this area, you can see that brightens up the fur and the character, and the area with the white hair is looking much more white, which is really what we want. 
and our fur is looking, starting to look more illuminated uh, from those secondary rays that come in with global illumination. Now uh, we can certainly use, uh, we're, we're looking a little over bright right now, but we have a lot of lights on that aren't casting shadows. So let's just uh, kill that for the moment. We'll bring back our light lister. Let's turn on the shadows for these other lights. Another thing that I'm going to choose while I do this is under the V-Ray tab, instead of our uh, fixed image sampler, let's go to the progressive sampler, which is really great for previewing this type of stuff because immediately you get the look and feel of what's happening. So if I click on render, you'll see that the light cache starts to build up. And because we've added those shadows, it's much darker and we're getting a lot of those nice shadows inside the fur which we want. And that progressive image sampler really does a great job. You can also go to areas and float over them like I am here to kind of uh, get a much better look at certain areas. So maybe in the face we want to see and maybe down here in the foot. We can see how that fur is kind of working out. So we're getting much closer to the result that we want. And now actually that we have this, uh, we might want to match that kind of brighter color a little bit more. So I'll just stop this render. We'll go into our material and I might make this overall multiplier a little bit closer to white. And right away we can see that that's a bit brighter. It'll kind of settle in with the light cache and then settle in with the progressive sampling. So now that we've tuned this at the kind of low resolution and we have a pretty close to photorealistic looking hair, we've added in some global illumination, we've added in some additional shadows with our fill lights, we can go ahead and up our resolution and uh, get a final looking render. So I'll just uh, stop this and we'll up some of that stuff. So I'm going to go into first our lights. Certainly want to at least double these so I'll go in and say 14. 24. Add some more samples to these guys here. I'll go into the render settings. And under global illumination, we'll probably uh, up these settings. So we'll go from 3 to 5 for brute force. And I guess we could probably leave light cache alone for now. We'll go over into the common tab and we can set our resolution a little bit higher. We'll uh, go up to 800 by 800. The next thing we might want to do is go over and increase the number of hairs we have rendering. So we'll go to hair from guides. And under render count, let's bring it from 8,000 up to 12. Under render settings, uh, we'll bring this hair size maybe down to 0.5 so that it's much smaller and thinner. And let's just do a quick render there. You can see that light cache build up. And there's a progressive image sampler kind of honing in. Then go to some areas that I really want to kind of see what's going on. That looks nice, some nice fine hair in there. As well as up there. And if I'm happy with this, I can give the progressive sampler a little bit more time or just go in and set it to use the adaptive image sampler. So I'll just stop this. Let me go into my render settings. In the V-Ray tab, we can go down and under Progressive, we can just go and increase our max subdivs or set a render threshold. I'll just set a render time to uh, maybe 5 or 10 minutes, and then I'll stop it when it looks like it's nice and free and clear for what I want it to be. And I'll click on Render. One thing I might want to do is uh, just make sure that this is off so that we're not sampling underneath the mouse more and everything samples evenly. See our light cache build up. And then the progressive sampler will progressively refine until we get a nice high quality image of our bear character with fur. And there we go. I'm just going to stop it right there. We got a pretty nice rendering of some photorealistic hair created and groomed with Ornatrix and rendered out with V-Ray. We explored looking at using V-Ray RT, progressive image sampling, and the V-Ray hair material. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and I hope it'll help you to render out some nice high quality hair using Ornatrix and V-Ray. Thank you very much.